Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a callout title. And callout titles have been popular for about a year, maybe a little bit more than that now. And a callout title allows you to point out specific objects in your shot and give information about it. And that's essentially what we'll be doing in this video. And we'll be breaking down a callout title from this video hive template. Go ahead and check out some links in the description. And I always suggest breaking down some of the elements that you see from professionals and recreating it in your own style so you can easily learn how professionals create high end work. And of course, if you're in a time crunch and you need callout titles, go ahead and check some of the links out in the description and see if they're the right match for you. And as always, if you can always buy a template and you can break it down, you can really see all the individual steps that that person takes. So it's pretty interesting how many ways you can learn. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and let's see how we can create this callout title. All right, so I already have a composition with a background here. I'm not really caring about the background in this tutorial, but let's go ahead and create the callout title. So first things first, let's grab the ellipse tool and we want to create a point. So let's say we want to call out this picture right here. Let's just say that's what we're going to do. Let's come over here with our ellipse tool, hold down shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect circle and we have a small circle right there. So you see that circle and we can of course move the circle, you know, wherever we want this call out tile to be. So I'll say right there. And then what we're going to do is hit S on our keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for scale, move it forward in time to maybe like 12 frames and we'll set it down to 0%. Make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. Scrubbing through this animation, you'll see that the circle comes from the center of the composition. What you can do is control double click the pan behind tool up here and that'll center the anchor point. So just control double click it and it'll come from the center of the anchor point. And then we'll come in here, duplicate this layer by going to edit, duplicate. And we'll come and grab the shape tool here and we'll click on the word fill and we'll set it to none. Select stroke, set it to salt color and click OK. And we'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And we'll bring the stroke count down to like four. And if we scrub through this right here, you can see that we have a very small circle indicator right there. And we can offset the shape layer just by a couple of frames so it comes out a little bit later. And that's looking cool. And if you want, we can duplicate the outline ellipse again. And we come here to the scale last keyframe and we can scale it up a little bit more. And we'll also hit Shift T on our keyboard for opacity, bring it down, or add a keyframe, bring that keyframe back in time and set the opacity down to 0% so it fades out. So you kind of have like this extra fade here for indication and we'll bring this back in time a little bit. And that should be interesting. So let's go ahead and continue to uh, build out this call out. So come here and grab the pen tool, make sure no layer is selected. And let's say we want our call out title to come from down here. So we can add a point here, kind of do a slanted point over here and then we can you know, hold down shift and now we have a straight line like this and make sure the stroke is enabled and the fill is turned off at the top here and we click off this now we have this line here which will indicate to our you know our graphic or you know with our titles and our background so this is looking good and let's open up this shape layer 4 and we can go in here go to add and we'll add trim paths open up trim paths 1 and we'll find a good place for this. So we want to start animating on right when that circle is right there. So add a keyframe for the end percentage, set it to 0%. Move forward in time, maybe go to like one second, maybe a little bit further and set it to 100%. And you can make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. All right, so we preview this real quick. All right, so a little bit fast for that. So let's go ahead and stretch it out. Not bad at all. Pretty much well paced there. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to pre-compose all these layers real quick so we can keep it clean here. I'm just going to call this one uh, just call out. And that's good. So that's basically the call out. Now we can start creating the box with our information. So come here, grab the rectangle tool. All right, and make sure no, none of your layers are selected and just draw out a rectangle. And of course, mine's a stroke, which is fine. And click on the word stroke set it to none and click on the word fill and we'll turn that back on to solid color. All right, perfect. So I just made a quick adjustment to the line over here. I just wanted this to come down a little bit more so it's not necessarily in the center of our shot, which of course you can always adjust the path of the stroke. All right, so now that we have a rectangle in here, what I want to do to reveal this on is to create a, another rectangle, but this time with the rectangle tool, go to mask or tool creates mask here at the top. So make sure that's selected and you can draw out a mask like this. And we want this to be revealed on at this moment in time. And so we'll hit M on our keyboard for the mask properties, add a keyframe for mask path. And we'll move forward in time to like maybe two and a half seconds or so. And we'll select the vertices of the left mask right here. And we'll just drag this out all the way over here like this. 
So we'll kind of just get this, and that's looking cool. And we'll come in here and we'll duplicate this layer, and we'll change the fill color to a, another color. So let's do maybe like pink there. And we can also the top layer. So now we'll kind of get this. So boom, and you get two layers like that. And we duplicate it again. And maybe we'll set this top color to black. So an offset, you'll kind of get a nice like three color spectrum like that. And that looks pretty cool. And that looks, you know, pretty cool. And we come over here and type out our text real quick. So let's change the font color to white. And I'm using beep as new. And we can call this one. And this could be like our main title. So it could be like, you know, Sunduck film painting or something. I don't know. I'm just going to keep call it that. It doesn't really matter. You would want to make sure that this is your primary uh, information. And of course, there's many ways that we can animate our text on. So what I want to do is just going to pre-compose this and we can call this one uh, main title. Grab our rectangle tool and we'll drag it on top of our box like this. We'll go back into our main title comp and we'll hit P on our keyboard for position, add a keyframe for it and we'll move back in time or actually we'll move its keyframe forward in time just by a little bit and we'll x position this off here and make the last keyframe an easy easy keyframe so essentially you're getting this and then we we'll go back to the main comp and you see that the main title will animate on kind of from the mask and of course we want to make sure that this mask is aligned to the bounding of this box here so I want to create two more areas of information. So like down here, we'll do a description and over here on the left side, you can put like a logo or maybe a price tag. It's just optional, but let's go ahead and work on that right now. So, so let's grab all three of our shape layers here and let's duplicate them, bring them to the top over here so we can keep everything organized. And we can close these down with them all selected to make it into a perfect square. So just close them down as best as you can. And we can bring them over here on the left side. So we have a little bit of a gap. So boom, now it's kind of already in place. And of course we'll offset these in time because we don't want them to come on until later. And I want to swap the colors a touch. And of course, we might need to bring the last keyframes in by a little bit. So the animation is just a little bit quicker. All right. And we can swap the colors easily just by moving the layers around and then just offsetting them how they were originally. All right, that looks good. And we'll keep it like pink like that. And we come over here, add a logo. I'm just gonna do a quick price tag. All right, so I added a quick uh, price tag in here and I'm going to just bring this endpoint in by a little bit so right now we kind of just have this box of our price tag and we want to animate our price tag uh, there's so there's many ways that we can animate this price tag in here but I'm going to use a quick little free plugin called animation composer uh, you, you can animate this anyhow you want you know with a scale but with animation composer we have all these uh, transition animation presets that I can just drag and drop really quick so I'll come here to two layer 2D layer transformations and I can bring in like a, a fade and scale. I can grab this transition and just drag it right into imply as in. And essentially now we have our animation applied within a couple of seconds and we can always offset this in space. Okay, so that's Animation Composer in a nutshell. You can animate that anyhow you want by using scale, whatever you want. But Animation Composer, I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description if you want to check out this plugin and also some of the preset packs to help you really enhance your animation. So let's come over here and continue to work on our description. So maybe what we want to do is just have some text ready to go. So I want to go ahead and paste it in my description text. So come here and grab the text style tool and make a box. So drag, click and drag and you'll make a box like this. So it's the same size of the... Uh, main title box and you just paste in your copy and of course I want to make some adjustments here because this is way too big we probably want to make it a little bit bigger we want to make it flush left and maybe we'll do like Gotham okay so now we have our title in here and I'm gonna go ahead and see how we can animate this in as like separate lines so we'll go to effects and presets go to animation presets we'll go to text and we'll come here to blurs and we'll grab one of my favorite free presets which is blur by word and of course, we'll want to bring those keyframes in so it's a little bit quicker on the animation. And we'll offset it over here. And, you know, that looks pretty cool. So if you need to create a background for your text just because it doesn't look good over, you know, footage, what you can do is just duplicate your one of your, you know, plates over here, your backgrounds, and put it on top, uh, underneath the text here like so. So I have this. And I lowered the opacity a little bit so there'll be some contrast with what's going on. But you'll be able to, you know, read it on top of any sort of footage. Um, and you obviously you're able to break up the design a little bit. So all looks pretty cool. We got all of our titles in here and we're able to read this call out title. And of course, if you might, and of course, if you're doing this on live action footage, you might need a 3D track it into your shot. I'm not going to do this in tutorial because there's already a ton of tutorials out there on how to do 3D tracking. So if your shot is in motion and you need to keep this in like Z space, go ahead and watch a 3D tracking tutorial if you don't know how to do that. But this is our end result. And if you want to reverse this animation, 
very easily, this is what I would do. I would grab all of our work. Uh, of course, make sure to turn on motion blur before you do this. Turn on motion blur at the top and pre-compose all of your layers. And we'll just call this one all. And say we want to reverse this. Say we want to animate this out right here. Come here, go to edit split layer, delete it, duplicate your all layer, right click it, go to time, and click on time reverse layer, and just offset this over here. I need to make my comp a little bit. And we'll drag the endpoint in by a touch. All right, so here is our final render from start to beginning. We have our callout title. May need to work on the space in that text, but obviously a little bit fast, and it's up to you how long you want to keep that up. Obviously, there wasn't a lot of time to read that, so just keep that in mind that it's about the timing. Obviously, I'm focusing on the animation design, not necessarily the timing for this tutorial, but you're able to take these concepts and really work on the timing for what you're looking. And like I said at the beginning of the video, go ahead and check out the links in my description to check out a couple of video hive templates where you can able to learn off of them and see how other people have created their callout titles and see what works for you. And of course, if this makes no sense to you and you need callout titles, go ahead and purchase the template. It'll save you a ton of time. But in the meantime, I hope this tutorial has been helpful and you're able to take away a few techniques from it. And if this video was successful for you, please go ahead and drop a like because it helps me out tremendously. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be great.